Hi there, I'm Carl, and today in Carl Makes Things, I'm going to take you through the process that I go through to paint up Dark Angels. Uh, Dark Angels are a pretty fun scheme, but they can be a little challenging because of how uh, hard it is to push contrast out from the dark green kind of base coat. And in this video, I'm going to show you the trick that I use to overcome that challenge and paint up some pretty fancy looking guys by hand. So the first color we're going to be starting off with is some heavy black green extra opaque from Vallejo. So really any combination of black and green will work okay as the base coat for this, but I chose this particular paint because uh, it is nice and thick and has very good uh, coverage properties. So it makes this job really quick. This took me about 10 minutes to do. So once our base coat's down, I'm going to grab some jade green and deep green from Vallejo Game Color and Model Color line and mix them together in a 50-50% ratio and load them up onto a makeup sponge that I've cut. Uh, this is then going to be used to stipple on the paint in what I call sponge blending uh, as a highlight. This is a pretty easy process, but it has a few pitfalls. One of them can be that if you go over one area too much, uh, you can actually remove paint off and create kind of a bald spot. So just be careful about that when you're doing this to avoid those uh, kind of situations, just to make sure that the area you're working on has a relatively dry coat of paint. So the next step here is for me to grab some model coder, black wash, and really we're going to use this to do the kind of secret that I was talking about earlier, the trick. Um, the trick here is an overall black glaze. Um, this is going to darken down the overall miniature and unify the two green colors we used to create a very subtle overall highlight. And we can come back in with a moist brush and just remove wash anywhere where we want a more impactful or bright highlight. My advice when removing this wash to create highlights is to use a, like I said, a moist brush, but also like work gradually, kind of pick away at the color until you're happy with it. One thing that can give you more work time with this wash is to work in small sections. Uh, so like leg, leg, shoulder pad, shoulder pad. It's what I'm doing in this video. Uh, and that gives you more time before the wash dries and allows you a greater amount of kind of uh, fine control on how you want to remove your wash. So you don't have to rush through the entire process. Um, if you remove too much of the wash, you can always go back over and wash it again. Just make sure that before you do give it a second coat of wash that the area is completely dry so you're not going to be disturbing any kind of semi-dry wash and causing issues with a uh, little bit of streaking. So once this wash completely dried, I came back in with the deep green, jade green combo on my makeup sponge and with just the corner of my makeup sponge, I started to just tap in uh, highlights onto this guy and anywhere where I felt like I was going a little bit too heavy, I'd come back in with the back of the makeup sponge and remove just a little bit of paint. My objective with this stage is to create some really nice, tight, uh, bright highlights of intense green to kind of emphasize the contrast with the darker black green that the guy is base coated with. And to further push that contrast, I'm going to be using a very bright steel for all the metallics on this guy. Um, this probably seems too bright, it seems like I'm hammering in uh, just like this almost white kind of uh, ultra bright silver. But what we're going to do is actually come back in with our black wash, and just like we've darkened down the rest of this mini earlier, we're going to do the same thing with all the metallics on this guy. Um, this is going to save us a whole lot of time, because by uh, putting down a really bright metallic and then washing it back down, we don't have to actually build up color uh, and contrast like we did earlier with the sponges with the base coat. Instead, we can take a shortcut by just washing back down something that's already bright. So I'm going to grab some flat brown next and apply this to pretty much everywhere where I think there's going to be some leather or some gold. Um, the reason I'm doing that, well the leather's obvious, leather's brown, but the gold though is weird. Um, so gold is very transparent, at least most of the ones that I've used. And the trick I've uh, kind of discovered to overcome that transparency is to undercoat it with brown. Uh, brown and gold, they're both warm colors, they both uh, kind of work together when they uh, are layered on top of each other. And speaking of undercoating, in order to kind of build up a bright bone color for the winged skull in his chest, I'm going to mix a little bit of our leather and bone white here together uh, in order to provide kind of a intermediate color between it and the bone white. It's going to mean that I have to put less coats of bone white down on his chest when I do get around to finishing that winged skull. And with my pure bone white, I'm going to just come in and start scratching in details for the leather. This is just a really ragged pattern. I'm just stippling in just weird scratches and cracks. Um, the idea for this leather being that it's very worn and a lot of the uh, kind of external hide is flaked off as it's kind of got banged around. Um, this kind of leather to me looks quite good and it's very simple. And any leather that feels like it's a little less worn uh, or maybe doesn't have as much damage, I'm just going to touch some edge highlights of my bone color in there. 
And uh, once that's all done, I'm going to come back in and just throw some pure bone onto that wind skull that I mentioned earlier. The next step here is for me to grab some heavy red and uh, throw this down with a bolter as a base color for building up red. Uh, red can be very challenging to build up. I'm choosing this relatively opaque but kind of dark red as a starting point. Um, however, I'm also trying to keep this as tidy as possible while I'm working, so I'm going to tidy up the, the steel as I go along. Another thing I'm going to do is grab some flat brown and just tidy up the leather scratches on the holster and other parts. If I see an area where I've gone a little too intense or they're too uniform, I'm just going to break them up a little bit to give uh, the entire thing a more organic feel. And I will go back and put down a second coat of red um, just to lay down a really firm, solid base color that I can build uh, you know, a brighter tone off of later. The next color here is going to be this polished gold. This is an ultra bright gold, and I'm using it in the same way that I'm using the silver. Um, I like to put down this gold and then wash it down to give it definition. And what I'm doing here is really just kind of focusing on getting on the raised top areas and making sure that I don't overload any details because I am using a fairly thick mix of this gold in order to only have to put down pretty much one coat. Switching back to some flat red, I also jammed out a few details here. Um, I threw the diagonal uh, kind of slash across this guy's shield plate on his shoulder pad and touched a little red onto his grenade on his leg. Picking up the pace here, I grabbed some basalt gray and picked it into all of the joints on this guy. They're also going to get washed down just like the silver and it's going to add detail. I also grabbed some brighter green and I attached it to all the fragmentation grenades on this model. With a little bit of this uh, Peridot Alchemy, I, it's kind of a brass color, I touched it onto all the gun shells for this dude, and I also came back in with a little bit of gold and touched it to the wing skull on his gun. After that, I grabbed some flat red and began layering up some brighter red tones onto his gun and onto a few other details, like the shoulder pad here with the diagonal, and also the eyes. I'm just using capillary action to kind of suck this flat red right into those lenses. And of course, I did a bit of a highlight just on all the grenades too. After that, I grabbed some Parasite Brown and mixed this in with a little bit of my flat red to create a more orange, uh, you know, kind of highlight color. Then I came in and I just touched it into a few of the areas to kind of brighten them up just a tiny bit more, create a little more color contrast, not really like luminance contrast so much. Uh, if I wanted to do that, I would have used a much more brighter orange. The next step here is some strong tone washing. Um, this is the stuff I mentioned earlier, the kind of technique that I use where I paint really bright metallics or I paint really bright uh, leather uh, decals and then I wash them back down. The trick I find with this technique is to come in and be kind of delicate and take your time. Uh, don't rush things, otherwise you'll have wash spill over the mini and you'll have uh, to go do some cleanup work. So you're saving time by going slowly essentially with this kind of technique. And really we're just getting this wash all over pretty much the places where I put down any of my warm colors or tones. So all the gold, all the brass, all the leather on this mini, it's all getting a coat of strong tone. The next step here is to grab some black model wash and get it onto all of the bright silvers and more neutral areas that need a washing on this guy. Just like with the strong tone, I'm taking my time with this uh, kind of technique and just very carefully working the wash into areas. I'm using just enough on the brush to get the job done for every area and not overloading the brush so that the wash doesn't actually flow into areas that I don't want it to go into. And for large flat areas like the front of his gun or the top of his backpack, I'm trying to avoid putting large dark spots in those areas. So I'm going to go back into those places once it's dry just a tiny bit and kind of wick away a little bit of wash. So I'm getting a nice even coat of wash in those areas that feels like natural and solid but not overly dark or kind of out of place. I also grabbed some black here at this point and used it to define the pattern on the shoulder pad plate a little bit more, just the thin black line between those two segments. Moving forward, I grabbed some red tone and touched this to all of the red elements on this uh, mini to kind of define the deep cracks and crevices on them a little bit better. So grabbing some of my bright green here, I came in and started to work up some edge highlights onto the areas that we've already kind of sponge highlighted up. This is kind of a final step that takes the sponge highlight and really breathes some life into it. It makes it feel much brighter than it really is and adds overall greater contrast to the miniature. Um, but I'm not going and putting these everywhere. I'm only really doing these in places I want to draw attention to. 
As a second step to that process, I also grabbed some deep green and put some kind of pure color highlights on all the most raised areas on this guy that are flat, so like his gorget on his neck and his shoulder pads. To finish up the lenses, I took a little bit of my red wash, touched that just to the fronts of the shoulder pads, and then a little bit of my Parasite Brown to the back parts of them. I then took some pure Parasite Brown on my brush and just started edge highlighting pretty much all the red elements on this guy. So mostly his bolter, but also his grenades, and uh, pretty much, you know, any little area that I think needed to be just touched up and brightened up a little bit. The last step that I went through on this mini is actually to apply the water transfers to the shoulder pads. And I went about doing this by trimming them out, uh, cutting some relief cuts so they'll conform a bit better to his uh, kind of a regular shoulder pad surface. Um, this will let the transfer kind of fold on over itself, and then trimming it down as much as I can to minimize the clear film uh, that's going to show up. To loosen the uh, transfer off of the uh, transfer paper, I used just a drop of micro set, uh, and then I kind of tease it on it until it was hydrated. I then picked it up with the brush and got it pinched up in my tweezers and then just slid the transfer onto the shoulder pad. At this stage, I uh, kind of teased it into place a little bit and flattened it down with my brush and a little bit of micro set, another product that I have, and then I used firm pressure to just push the transfer down flat with a Q-tip. Now transfers tend to dry very shiny, so in order to kind of knock that shine back down, I have some matte varnish that I've mixed up with just a drop of water, and I'm going to just brush a coat of this on top of this transfer to kind of bring it more in line with the overall finish of the miniature and allow me to like easily paint on top of it. The very last step here is going to be taking some heavy black green and a little bit of silver and painting on a few scratches and irregularities to the transfer to make it feel more grounded and part of the miniature. Um, this is a really simple process and doesn't take very much time, but it really makes transfers feel much more integrated with the overall miniature. And I'm done at this point, uh, but for a little bit of a bonus, I'm just tidying up my uh, brushes here. You can see my technique. I'm basically just using just a little bit of water and a little bit of soap to get most of the paint out on this paper towel. And then I kind of uh, condition the tip a little bit by uh, loading it with soap and then shaping it with my fingers. And this is the final product. I'm pretty happy with how he turned out, especially considering it only took me about two hours to paint him and I was answering questions on stream while I did it. Um, this guy was painted on the Carl Makes Things stream over on Twitch. And if you're looking to catch a show live, I stream on Thursdays and Sundays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Also, KMT has a Discord server. It's free and open to pretty much anyone. We kind of hang out there and chat about painting and our progress and you know what we're working on. So, you know, it's pretty relaxing and everyone's welcome. So you can come by and check it out sometime if you're feeling inclined to. And the cherry on top of uh, this video is going to be one of my Patreon questions. Uh, the Patreon question is from SGEM, and uh, they say, What are your favorite priming colors? So my go-to color for general purpose pr uh, painting is going to be just like a medium to dark gray. Uh, the reason I like this is because I can put on a medium to dark uh, color coat on top of it, like a blue or a green or a red or whatever, and then I can actually build that up with a sponge uh, and progressively lighter paints. Um, if you paint white, the or prime white I should say, the shadows and recesses in your minis tend to be kind of artificially bright. And if you paint black, uh, it tends to be a lot of work to actually build up those medium color tones to build up to brighter tones with sponges or with dry brushing. The bolter is a good example in this video where I had to paint red on top of essentially a black undercoat and it took me a lot of layers and progression to build up to that nice bright red. Whereas if I had primed gray, I could just put the flat red on and just completely skip the original um, uh, heavy red uh, kind of layer. And that's all I have for you for today. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a nice day. Uh, this is Carl signing off until next time. Bye bye.